Hi, welcome back to McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy and today we are continuing our series on the 2021 external exams in Queensland, Australia for general mathematics. And this is our second question on paper two. It's a decision mathematics question. So let's get crack-a-lacking. Question two, it was worth four marks. All buildings in a school are connected by underground electricity cables indicated by the network. All measurements are in metres. The electricity cables need replacing and will cost $1,200 per metre. The school wants to minimise costs by replacing the shortest length of cable necessary to connect all buildings. If the school has a budget of $155,000, evaluate whether they can afford this project. So we need to make sure we've read the question carefully. The key words in this question are that we want to minimise costs by replacing the shortest length. So we're not replacing every network cable in the whole network. Because you would notice, for example, that there's lots of lines going all in between different places. For example, class two is fed by one, two, three, four, five, six different electricity cables. And really only one needs to go to class two. So there's a lot of redundant cables in this network. So what we actually are looking for here is the shortest network to connect all buildings and that means we're creating a minimum spanning tree. So understanding what the question is actually asking us to do means that the rest of it's pretty easy straight from here. So remember to create a minimum spanning tree. We can actually do this by using either Kruskal's or Prim's algorithm. I'm a bit of a fan of Kruskal's so I'll take you through that one today. And it means that there are no loops in the network. So every different building will be reached and it will be reached without any loops or without any enclosed network spaces. So what we do with um, Kruskal's algorithm is that we find our shortest side. So looking at our network, the shortest side is the side with the 15 meters. And we use, we go up in stages. So we start with 15, then we look for the next um, longest part of the network and then the next longest and we basically add in each of those different cables um, until we get to the end. So let's try that. So let's start with 15. So we're going to make that um, so that we can reach every different building. Here's our first one. It doesn't matter which one you pick, just pick one that's 15. Okay, so there's one. Let's pick another one. Okay, we've got uh, two more left that are 15 meters long. So I picked the bottom, you could have picked the other side if you wanted to, but I can't pick the last 15 because if I go between class two and class four now, what I end up doing is creating this closed network. So I don't wanna do that. So now I'm gonna move from 15 to the next highest number, which is 20 in the network. And there are two different ones with 20. I could pick either of those. The first one there goes from class four to the tuck shop. I could have also done class two to the tuck shop, not a big deal. They're both 20 meters long, but I only need to pick one of them because the minute I pick the other 20, I've now closed that network in. So it's no longer a minimum spanning tree. Okay, so now I'm going to move up to the next highest number in my next work, which is 25. So there we go from class two to admin. Once again, I could have gone from class one to admin, but I don't wanna do both because then I'll create a triangle which closes in and creates that loop. So I don't wanna do that. That means there's redundant cables in there. That means I'm basically um, meeting a vertex with two different um, pathways, not necessary. So I look at my next biggest number and it is 45, which is the, from the tuck shop to the sports shed. And then I have a quick scan of the network. I'm not gonna choose 60. Um, there's 60 going from class one to class four. That will close that in. 60 from class two to the sports shed will also close in and it won't be a spanning tree. In fact, my work here is now done. I don't even need that 80 from the admin to the sports shed because that closes the shape in as well. It closes that whole network in. So now I actually have a minimum spanning tree. Every different building is reached um, and reached once. Okay, so I've got my minimum spanning tree. I also need to not just communicate that on the diagram. I need to make sure I state what that spanning tree is as a network sentence of some kind. So you could use some sort of codes like A for admin, C2 for class two, that sort of thing, that would be fine. And the marking scheme that the QCAA produced also allowed that. Um, I've just done it in words from admin to class two, to class one, to class three, to class four, to, class, to the tuck shop, to the sports shed. So I've stayed them a minimum spanning tree. 
I've earned my first mark out of four. Okay, on to the second mark, because the question didn't just ask me to create a minimum spending tree. I have to evaluate if they can afford the project. So now that I've got all the cables in place and decided where they're going, I need to work out how long that network is in meters. So I'm gonna calculate the length of the tree. So from admin to class one, remember it was 25, and I'm gonna to add to that 15 for class two, and then, uh, sorry, class one, and then on another 15, another 15 onto the tuck shop is a 20 and then onto the sports shed is 45. Add those together, you get 135 meters. That was my second mark. And that's for determining the total length of the network. Now that I've got the length of the network, I know the cost is $1,200 per meter from the question. So now I'm simply gonna take that total distance and multiply it by $1,200 per meter, which gives me a total cost of $162,000 and that's the total cost for the network. That's my third mark. Okay, final mark now is this evaluation part. Evaluation means I need to make a decision and I need to explain it with mathematical reasoning. So, here's my evaluation. The school cannot afford the project because the project budget is $155,000 and it's gonna cost $162,000. So all I needed to say was that 162,000 is greater than the budget of 155,000. I've earned my fourth mark because I've determined if they can afford it and I've evaluated it. You could have gone a step further. It's not a bad idea to do this, to work out how much the shortfall is. There's a shortfall of $7,000 and even stating that wouldn't have been worth a mark in this particular marking scheme, but you just never know if that's gonna be a requirement. Especially sometimes I see that in internal exams in your school, a teacher will expect you as part of your evaluation to explain that difference. So always put the difference in if you're unsure, better to go in whether you're in doubt and put it in there anyway, it doesn't hurt. But it does if a mark's been allocated to it. So definitely don't leave that out. Well, did you find this video helpful? I sure hope so. And if you did, why not share it with a friend or a teacher? You could even share it to Facebook or Instagram. Um, we'd love if you did that, that'd be awesome. You could even tell us in the comments if you found the video helpful. I love reading your comments, it just makes my day. And why not like and subscribe to the channel? That way you'll have notifications every time there's a new video available. And you can set those notifications up so that they're not annoying as well. If you've got any questions about something you saw in this video, you could contact me at mcclutchymass at yahoo.com or direct message on Facebook and Instagram. Another thing you could consider is re-watching the video earlier in our series on decision mathematics. There's a whole video on minimum spanning trees, so you'll be able to cover um, Kruskal's algorithm again there with some worked examples. Well, you've been watching McClutchy Mass, and I'm Natalie McClutchy. Thank you so much for joining me, and have a wonderful day.